shall we praise the Lord. The earth is the Lord's and the form is the Lord's. The world and they that dwell therein. For he's founded upon the seas and established it upon the floods. They call this the hill city. Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He that have clean hands and a pure heart. Lift up your hands. The Lord mighty in battle. Wow. When I see God this week, I see him the same way I saw him last year. He was seated on the throne. That means he wasn't pacing back and forth. He wasn't nervous. He's seated with all things in control. I want to thank the Church of Lynchburg for showing up tonight. We are one church. We are one church. We are getting ready to pray corporately tonight, and I just want to say uh, to you, today we stand here on the steps of Monument Terrace, a place that is dedicated to the honor of soldiers that have died, both black and white, for the freedoms of this country. Today we stand here in the historic streets of the city of Lynchburg that bears its own claim to systematic racism educationally and economically. As I stand here today, I know who I am. I am the great, great grandson of Archie Johnson and Sarah Johnson, who were tobacco farmers and Amherst County. One day, Archie loaded his wagon to come to Lynchburg, and his wife asked him to bring her some material home that she could make her a new dress for Easter. That was the last time she spoke to him. He headed home after picking up some material and dropping off his load somewhere here in the midst of these tobacco warehouses. On his way home, a white gentleman decided to use my ancestor's hat on his head as a shooting target and bragged that he could shoot the hat off of that you-know-what's head. And he did. The next thing Archie Johnson did, what cost him his life, he got off his horse, he picked up the tattered hat and put it back on his head. But that gentleman saw it as a sign of defiance, so he released another shot, but this time in his head. My great-great-grandmother Sarah waited for her husband to come home, and finally, as the horse pulled wagon came home with no driver, she found her husband lying dead in the back of the wagon. Four generations later, I'm standing here facing some of the same demons fighting some of the same war, racism is sin. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I said racism is sin. Yeah. I don't care how you decorate it, how you label it, customize it. This is bigger than a black issue. Yeah. This is bigger than a white issue. It's bigger than an American issue. It's a sin issue. The earth is sick and the ground is polluted with blood. And the Bible says God approaches Cain and ask him, where is your brother? Tonight, God is asking us, Lynchburg, where is your brother? How is he doing? Is he okay? Cain answered, am I my brother's keeper? God let Cain know that I know what you did. I know how you did it, how you handled your brother, because his blood told me. The Bible said that the blood of Abel spoke to God from the dirt. Well, if the blood of Abel was able to talk to God, how much more does the blood of Jesus speak on our behalf? Well, 
I want somebody to shout, it's a sin issue. It's a sin issue, but there's blood for that. For this polluted earth, he gave us a prescription. He said, if my people who are called by my name, if they will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sins and heal their land. Church, we got sins that need to be forgiven. We got land that needs to be healed. And as believers, we have to turn from our wicked ways. The American church from its inception has been plagued with racism. This is why I challenge and I thank God for my white brothers and sisters that showed up tonight. Because when you told me to stand with you for sex trafficking victims, I stood. Yeah. When you told me to stand with you for the persecuted church in China, I stood. Yeah. Uh -huh. When you told me to stand with you for Israel, I stood. Yeah. But many times when it came to racism and black brothers being killed, we stood alone. Uh -huh. But tonight is different. I said tonight is different. Don't get nervous tonight. I know what I'm saying. There are times where statements and concepts are hijacked by political rhetoric. Yeah. Things like white privilege people throw around. But I want you to hear me. When I say it, I want you to know what I mean. From 1619 to 1865, while the white man in this country was free, blacks were slaves. From the 1870s to 1950, while Others were living the American dream. We were bound by Jim Crow laws that would not allow us to vote and ultimately told us we were not American citizens after we built it. After our black soldiers came home after fighting these wars, they were denied the GI Bill and housing that other people had. After these men fought for the freedom of this country, they came home and couldn't sit in restaurants. It was on Independence Day, 1961, that the city of Lynchburg refused to integrate its pools and turned around seven young men and instead of allowing them to swim, they shut down the pools of Lynchburg for 25 years. Yeah. Wow. It was not until 1962, I'm getting ready to pray, that Lenata Wintroff and Owen Cartwheel became the first black students to walk through the doors of E.C. Glass High School. Yeah. When I say white privilege, I'm saying you've experienced a head start that we didn't have. But you didn't choose it. Right. None of us chose where we are, where we came from, and where we were born to. Come on. I'm not saying I want you to have guilt. I just want you to have some responsibility. Uh, uh. Every major accomplishment, oh, that's all right to clap. Every major accomplishment in the journey of the freedom of black people in this country has been linked to the partnership of white Christians. Uh, yeah. During slavery, there were white abolitionists. Yeah who fought for our freedom. Yeah. There were Quakers who operated in the yeah. Underground Railroad. Yeah. During the Civil Rights Movement, there were whites who marched with King Abernathy yeah. and Young. Yeah. A 39-year-old white woman from Detroit got in her car and left her five children and her husband because she felt the call of God to go to Selma, Alabama to march to have a better world for her kids and the Ku Klux Klan killed her. It was a white woman. We may, we may not be the generation that calls this, but we can be the generation that heals this. Yeah. Mordecai looked at Hadassah. Mordecai looked at Esther and says, could it be that you have been brought into the kingdom for such a time as this? So let me say to you, not only do we need you, we want you. Right. Let this be not the black people's legacy, the white people's legacy. Let this be our legacy. Yeah. I'm not a Christian. I just want to serve notice and leave this on record. I'm not a Christian because of a white man's religion. Uh -huh. I'm a Christian because of a Hebrew man's blood. There you go. I'm Pentecostal. I'm trying to stay Presbyterian. I feel the Holy Ghost. There were Christians in Africa before there was ever a Christian in America. Before I am a black man, before I am an American, I am a believer. As I close in this address, I want to serve notice on some of the rhetoric I hear. When you say all y'all going to do is pray, 
Praying is not weak. There's power in prayer. There's healing in prayer. I'm not talking about positive thinking or meditation. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. Y'all come on, brothers of my church. I'm ready to pray. Things shift when we pray. Things change when we pray. Strategies are released when we pray. Hearts are changed when we pray. So let prayers of heaven shake the earth until mountains move, governments shift. And I want to pray tonight for healing and revival. If I could just get some more pastors from Lynchburg to come and stand with me. And I want you to lift up your hands in this city street. And I want you to ask God, come on, Lord, heal our nation. Come on. I want us to ask God, send a revival. Send a revival in our land. Move our hearts, God. Turn the hearts of the fathers to their sons. Turn the hearts of the sons to their father. Heal our land, oh God. Heal our land. Send a revival from the White House. Send a revival to the poor house. Send a revival, Lord. We need healing in our country. Let us see each other as sisters and brothers. Let us see each other as your children, your sons and your daughters. Heal my land. Come on. Will you lift up your hands all over these streets tonight? And God, we ask you to send a revival. Send a, come on, send a revival, Lord. Send a revival, Lord. Lord, we're looking at the politicians, but God, we ask you to send something that the politicians can't do. God, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus, turn people's hearts. There are individuals that are looking for answers. But Lord, we thank you that out of a million questions, you are still the answer. Come on, let's pray. Let's pray. All, however you pray, just lift up your voice. Think of not strange. Think of not strange that this pandemic took place. All of this took place during Pentecost, where people came into one city, in the city of Jerusalem, from nations all over this world. And Acts chapter 2 says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place with one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house. Lord, with our hands lifted, it doesn't matter what our economic background is. It doesn't matter what our racial makeup is. God, we're asking you to send the wind of the Holy Ghost. I need somebody to help me pray that, Lord. Send the wind of the Holy Ghost. We need you, oh God. Send the wind of the Holy Ghost. Oh God. Send the wind of the Holy Ghost. We need your spirit that unifies. We need your spirit that breaks down barriers and breaks down walls. We need your spirit that we can see through the eyes of the spirit. To see that them that are working for us, that are greater than them that are working against us. Lord, give us a revelation. Lord, let us not be intoxicated with our anger. Push us from strife to strategy. Lord, God, I'm asking you for divine connections and divine relationships. Lord, let us come out of our comfort zone and let us see each other like you see us, Lord God. Let us see the value in people, Lord, that we looked over before. Help us to have a revelation of the individuals that we're connected to and those who've been living across the street, those who we've been working with. Let us see them like you see them, oh God. Let us see them beyond a color. Let us see them beyond a zip code. Let us see them beyond an academic prowess. Hallelujah. Let us see them like you've seen them, oh Father. Lord, I thank you that you're posturing us. You're posturing us for revival. You're posturing us. You're sending a move. And we need you to shift us tonight. We need you to shift us. I know we got a social distancing issue, and if you're not, not comfortable with it, please don't do it. But if you're comfortable with the person you're standing there, will you just put your hands on their shoulders? Oh, God. I believe the Lord will cover us in this moment. Because there's a name that's bigger than the name COVID. 
There's a name that's bigger than the name racism. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Oh God. There's been a whole lot of noise in this country. And rightly so. There was a whole lot of noise downtown last night. But I don't want us to release a noise. I want us to get ready to release a sound. A precise sound. Because sometimes we got noise with no substance. End up with a sound with no strategy. Cry if you have to cry, but don't cry so long that you can't recover. Be angry, but sin not. Oh, glory be to God. Now, I want you to know something. I have, a, I have a prophetic assignment. I've had this assignment for a long time. I went to school in Gretna, Virginia. I was on the football team. Now, my uniform didn't look like everybody else's. Uh, okay, I was the mascot. Somebody said, oh, uh, you don't have to say all oh, the, the coach told me I was just as a part of the team as the That's quarterback. Right. That's right. He said to me, he said, you got a job to do. I was the Gretna Hawk. He says, you got to go out there in that field before the players come out. And before the game even starts, you got to get the crowd to make a noise. Uh. Then he said, listen, this is very important. Because if you get them to make the right sound, it'll send a message to the players that even before the game is over, they've already won. He says, I want you to release a sound. Get them to release a sound that ministers to the players that we don't have to wait till the battle is over. We can shout now because it's a fixed fight. Now, some of you are Red Sox fans, Red Skins fans, Cowboy fans. And you really make a lot of noise for your team. But if you know that Jesus made a touchdown over 2,000 years ago, and where we are right now, we're not fighting for the victory, but we're fighting from the victory. All over this place, I want you to open up your mouth and release a shout of victory. <laughs> Hallelujah, of course you're going to say, Hallelujah. 